Hello everyone, this is Colin on the ASA Elite channel, and here we are for the Penzel Pro Series, race 15 at Indianapolis. Now this race is usually race 14, as it's been the last two years, however they bumped it up one more race to make room for Kansas, and this will be the second to last race of the regular season. Here are the point standings coming into this race. Jay Barker coming off a win, now extends his points lead over Jay Durrell in second, with Aaron Luke, Swipster, Zygarde, and Brian Boone rounding out the top five. However, that cut line is the place you got to be watching now with two races left in the regular season. As the cars roll off, let's get your starting lineup now. On the pole is Kyle Collins in the number 83 car. On his outside, Jay Durrell looking to come back from a horrible weekend last week at Kansas. Row 2, Aaron Lukes and Eric Willis. Willis trying to stay in this chase. Row 3, Michael Jones and Rick Witt, a pair of Dodges. Row 4, Jack Newman, Arsha Sane, national racing teammates. One car is almost guaranteed in, one's almost guaranteed out. Row 5, Rock McMahon and Cody Russell, two more Chevys. Row 6, Allison Davidson, Darlington winner, and, row, and Kyle Singer in the 11, Do Dover winner. Row 7, last week's winner, Jay Barker and Ryan Dunn on the outside, still winless this year. Row 8, Derek Petrie in the 53, and Blaine Keyes. Row 9, Cole Baker running for the Rookie of the Year, and Brian Lenning for Tanker Motorsports. Row 20s, I mean row 10s, Zach Kamoski and Nicholas Mudio both fighting to keep just trying to make the chase. Row 11, Nick Purcells trying to make the chase and Dion Scott is outside. Row 12, Ryan Kendall and Brian Boone. Boone one of the few drivers now with two wins. Row 13, Webster Zygaard in the 12 and Cesar Chavez on his outside. Row 14, Addison Snapback just outside the cut and Sam Rogers pretty well in. Row 15, Callum Wood making his debut, and Jack Porkins in the, in the 52. Row 16, Tony Green and John Gilbert, two Fords. Row 17, Tyler Selspin and Nikita Rizkov, Nikita 18th in points coming into this race. Row 18, Daniel Maxwell and Jose Vaquez, Maxwell 23rd in points. Row 19, Daniel Voiles and Matthew Brown, both also on the cusp, 25th and 21st in points. 20th, Zach Cars and Carson Scott. Both also trying to make the chase. Row 21, rounding out the field is Ruby Easton and John Cinedino. Here are the people that did not qualify for the race, and we are just about set to go racing here at the legendary speedway. Green flag is in the air, and here we go, racing at Indy. Out of turn two, the third place driver, Aaron Lukes, is going to look to the inside of the 83, and I believe he has it. Kyle Collins is trying to fight his way to the inside, but Michael Jones is there. And Jay Durrell, I don't know if he had a, if he spun the tires or not, but it didn't look like he was able to get through turns one and two that as well as the 83 did. But Aaron Lukes was on top of his game, and he went right to the inside of the 83. And now both the 43 and the 83 are falling back in the field. Jack Newman, Aaron Luke's teammate who started back in the third row, is now up to second. Michael Jones, though, is not wanting to keep let that happen, as Michael Jones is going to take second away from Newman. Jones comes in here trying to get a win to secure himself into the All-Star race. But here's a guy who has two wins now after last week. Jay Barker, the number one driver coming into this race in points. Barker looking to con continue to extend his lead. He is already safe on points no matter what happens at this race. Um, he will be moving on no matter what. So Barker, while he doesn't have too much to worry about, he probably still wants to get another win. Um, Aaron Lukes though, is really pulling away from the field. Oh, and a spinner in the back! And it will bring out a caution flag. I believe I saw Jose Vaquez shoot to the inside of the track, it, almost into the grass, but I couldn't exactly see. We were too far away to exactly see what happened. I'm going to see a replay and just decipher what exactly happened back here. It looks like Rick Witt ooh, gets really wide, and Ryan Dunn is going to force the gap, and, well, there's not enough room to do that, and Dunn is going to pay for it dearly. Rick Witt is going to get hit multiple times. Carson Scott may have a little bit of damage as well in the O2 car, but it doesn't look like as big of a wreck as it could have been. Here's Ryan Dunn, and I don't blame Dunn for trying to take the position, but there was not enough room to make that pass. Um, 
Rick Witt looked like to get very tight out going into turn two and was not able to turn the car downward. And Dunn tried to take advantage of it, both starting in the back, having a frustrating weekend so far. And obviously it's not going to get any better with both of them crashing here only on the third lap. However, things are going to get a little bit more frustrating for the O2 car as he, I guess he didn't see the car slowing up as much as the other people did. And while Rick Witt, John Gilbert, Ryan Dunn will escape with it with no damage, Carson Scott, however, will get his foot pumped in. However, he won't drop out of the race because of this. Green flag would fly with all three national racing cars in the podium positions. The five car is currently leading the race, however, and after we saw that impressive first lap pass, it's not very surprising. But Jack Newman's the one wanting to take that lead away from him. And Newman, we saw, also charged the front, but he was end up, ended up getting passed by Michael Jones. However, due to some pit stops, Michael Jones has been pushed to the back of the field a little bit. He's sitting back in seventh. Ooh, car's going off in the back. I believe that was Allison Davidson. In Webster's Zagard, it looks like they'll be able to... Ooh, and another another close call there. Brock McMahon and Zach Kamoski. And that's two close calls there in one lap. I believe Allison Davidson and Webster Zygarde make contact coming out of turn four back there. Um, the Blaine Keys, your Talladega winner, trying to secure his way into the chase. He is still on the cusp line of being able to miss the chase. So he, have, he has a bad week here. Um, might not work out from his chase points go. Here's his teammate, Cole Baker. Cole Baker rumored not to be coming back to this car. However, he wants to finish out the year good and possibly earn Rookie of the Year, especially with his competitor and teammate, Stuart Gratton, missing the race. We're looking at Daniel Maxwell. Maxwell dropped out of the race before it even began because of an e engine issue, and this really hurt his chances of making the chase because while he was in going into the race, he, is, he, was, he left the race 23rd in points and about 20 points behind the cut line. So he definitely needs to... Oh no, and a car is blowing up! Speak of the devil, Zach Kamoski. And while after he wrecked out last week, it wasn't really expected to see him um, be able to make the chase. However, this will pretty much dash any hopes of him making the chase. He had a good run going too in the top 10. However, it does not look like it's going to last. And right when you talk about engine troubles, it happens to someone else on the track. Definitely disappointing though to see Zach Kamoski not make the chase this year, if that is the case. Here is Nikita Rizkov in the 16. He's trying to keep his hopes alive to make his first chase. Um, Arsha Sane in front of him also trying to get into the chase. However, he'll need to have two very good runs in order for that to happen. Here's the first time driver, Callum Wood. He is not a rookie, however, ran pretty much the full schedule in the 25 car last year until about race 20 where he gave up his ride for Cesar Chavez, who became um, a full-time driver in the 03 for this season. Um, but Callum Wood is back, stepping in for the suspended Joseph Swigley after his actions at Darlington. He ended up missing last week at Kansas, but he has come back with definite strength here at Indy today. We have a caution on the track. Um, it looks like, it appears to be in the back of the field, because I don't see any skid marks ahead of Swigley. Or, I mean, Wood. And it looks like it's going to involve Rick Witt. Matthew Brown sitting on pit road. That is devastating for the 21 team. I don't, I believe, yes, it will have to do with him. And he's going to get a tap from Cesar Chavez, and he is going to get spun through the grass. Look out. He'll be able to miss everybody. I don't believe, okay, that's where Rick Witt's going to get damaged. Oh, and there you go. And that is what finished him off. Carson Scott flying into the mist there. No hood on his car, so I don't know why he wasn't able to see the 21 car sitting there. Running on board, Brian Lenning, and... That's a, not a good feeling when you see a car skid up across the track in front of him, but luckily he was able to avoid it. Here's Rick Witt, as you see, just barely gets clipped. He was already having a pretty bad day as it was. And it looks Ryan Dunn's going to give him a pretty big da bash on the nose there. I wonder what that's about. Probably because of the first incident. And that's a little um, worrying, as these two have had a history together, and definitely don't want to bring that back up again definitely Ryan Dunn angry at Rick Witt and you see Carson Scott I am not entirely sure what he is thinking there um, maybe he slipped in some fluid or something but that's highly doubtful since the 11 car was only spun off the track and it wasn't like an engine issue or anything like that 
Anyways, we will be back under green flag conditions, though, with Aaron Lukes in the lead. However, Jay Barker is going to make a move to the inside. Ooh, and Barker's going to make the move, and he is going to make it stick. Blink, he's a sit settled down in third. And it looks like Barker will, in fact, take the position. What a strong move through the corner that was. And wow, what an impressive move by Barker, showing why he is a two-time winner. And we have another caution on the track. Oh boy, and this is going to involve a bunch of drivers, including second in points, Jay Durrell. Oh man, and he had a horrible pit stop and put him in the back of the pack. And that is not going to help his confidence out as he had a horrible week last week looking to rebound today. And he is going to end up getting involved in an accident. We're going to follow along with Nikita Rizkov to see what we see. Ooh, and Nikita is going to fade up the track way too much. And he's going to get into Sam Rogers. Nowhere for Darrell or Zach Cars to go. Cars comes in here 16th in points. A pretty, pretty sizable gap. But definitely nowhere near as safe as he'd want to be. Especially looking like he's going to drop out of the race after this. Got to look at Nikita though. 18th in points as well. Points complications building up. And that was a good avoidance by John Gilbert there. Just maintaining his line on the outside. And he'll be able to drive right through it. However, under the caution, we had some pit strategy. Since the cars already came down pit road, a bunch of the leaders decided to come down again and top off with fuel. However, five drivers decided not to, and they are going to stay on the track and hope to play the pit strategy game. Leading them back to the line, though, would be Ruby Easton for Overdrive Motorsports. No word on whether this team is going to be coming back next year with Ruby or not. But if Ruby can somehow pull off a good finish, anything like a top five, this could definitely just make the entire season a little less painful for the team. And maybe it'll, it'll let them build some confidence and get some better finishes in the future. Overdrive Motorsports not been the most successful team. Probably the second worst, if I have to say the worst, would be Global Motorsports or Autosports. But you see Barker is definitely wasting no time at National Racing's entry. Probably one of the best teams in the sport. Michael Jones is going to hit the wall coming off of four. But Jay Barker, you see, already clearing three of the cars that decided to stay out. And this is proving that tires appear to be a necessity here at Indianapolis. We hadn't seen any strategy yet because of all the cautions. But now that we're seeing it, it looks like Barker is definitely using these fresh tires to his advantage. In the back of the field, we got to mention also Jack Porkins is making the making the return to this series in the 52 car as he did not qualify last week at Kansas um, but he is back in the car here at Indy and he has had a subpar day with his driver rumored to be going to Hoffman Motorsports and with their move to Dodge that wouldn't be surprising seeing as well he's driving a Dodge here for Vincent Motorsports and at Red Stallion Racing in the Power Brand Average Series to make more sense but definitely a great future for Jack Porkins in this series but we have a battle for the lead Barker had gotten around Lenning and now he is all over the back of Ruby Easton and Easton has done a great job holding off the feet off the number two car for now but will he will she be able to do it for the rest of the race I doubt it as Barker is right on her back end I expect a move into three there it is Barker is going to go to the inside and what an accomplishment it would be if Barker would win this race. That would put three wins on the board for him. And pretty interestingly enough, that would really be similar to what Jay Durrell did last season. In fact, Durrell ended up sweeping races 14 and 15 last year. Interesting. As you see, the cars go by a little bit of a flyby. Hit strategy, though, will be playing into effect as Ruby Easton is going to have to take her car down pit road to fill it up with gas. However, the leaders only got about two or three more laps of fuel because of pitting that extra time. So I don't believe everyone else will be able to make it back. Definitely not, actually. Um, here's Cole Baker. He has assumed the second place position. And this is an incredible run out of the rookie. Um, with the driver that is unsure of his future, whether he's coming back or not in that case. Um, Cole Baker is definitely showing that he is a good driver in this 41 team and Hoffman would be incredibly dumb to not bring him back but it, it plan it's gonna lay out if Cole Baker is actually coming back to the series or not it's, if um, he'll be returning to that ride 
So far, no word yet. No official word, at least, on that matter. Currently, like I said, running for Rookie of the Year honors with his teammate Stuart Gratton. If he can pick off a good finish here today, it'll be a huge gain on Stewart who missed this race. But you see Barker is going to come down pit road four laps after Easton did. And Barker is going to be the first to lead the rest of the field. His teammate, Jack Newman, is going to follow him next, along with a majority of the field. However, staying out in the track would be Aaron Lukes and his teammate, who's not been up to par with the other three national racing cars. Arsh Hussain, however, that can pretty much describe the entire season for national racing. Arsh has kind of been the drawback for the team. Um, with bad luck, sure, but that's that's a whole nother story. But Aaron Lukes, you see, getting out of the pit stall. Where is Barker? And actually, we're showing Brian, I mean, Daniel Boyles as in third. Except he was on pit road, excuse me, never mind. But Barker is now going to fill in second place as Nick Purcell is actually going to take over third. And that's a great run for Nick as he is 24th in points and he needs this run. However, for Aaron Lukes, that pit stop will be what he needs. And with six laps to go, he will get out in front of Jay Barker. And that could be the deciding factor here as Barker came into the pits in the lead, but it's Aaron Lukes out. Aaron Lukes has gone so long without a victory. He's been here since season one of the Penzoil Cup Series back in the day. However, he still has not gotten that victory. And being third in points, you'd expect him to by now. He probably will take over second, actually, now that Jay, Bar Jay Durrell has had some problems today. But another driver that's done extremely well. How about Callum Wood? First start back this season, he's contending for a top five. Also, there is Tyler Selspin. He is confirmed not to be coming back to the series next year. I'm um, dropping out, going to do some Australian Supercross cars or something like that. Um, but he will not be returning to this series. That's all we know. He's having a good run as well, competing for a top five. However, with two laps to go, the lead is heating up. Jack Newman, he was able to get by the double zero car, but I believe he is out of the equation. I don't believe he has enough time left to get to the front. Oh, and Barker's going to set him up. Yeah, he is there now. And our Aaron Lutz's lead he had is gone. Down the straightaway. Does Barker have enough? He's going to get the quarter panel. He's at the side door. And he's right alongside him now. Down into turn one. Oh, no. He's going to... He's cleared. He is clear. And with on the final lap... Jay Barker has cleared Aaron Lukes and has gone to the lead. Jack Newman is closing in, but like I said, it's he's going to run out of time. Does Aaron Lukes, however, have anything left? Could he somehow pull up alongside the two car going down the straightaway like Barker did? And now, checkered flag about to be waved. I don't believe Aaron Lukes is close enough. And hello, Jay Barker. Welcome to the three-time winner's circle for 2016. Checkered flag is out, and the number two car, Van Chevrolet, driven by a national racing driver, Jay Barker, is going to go to victory lane two times in a row now, and he will be the third consecutive driver to make it two in a row in races 14 and 15. Addison Steinbeck and Jay Durrell are the other two. Here are the finishing results as Barker on top of the board, second... The, only the third time in history, and all of them happen to be at the same two tracks. As Barker will be, the, will be able to get two consecutive wins in a row. Here is the rest of the field. Um, Blaine Key's poor, poor pit stop under green flag conditions put him down to 28th. But how about Jay Durrell and all the people on the chase bubble having bad days? A lot of them. And now the point standings. Everyone in green is confirmed to be in the chase. So that is about half the grid currently confirmed. But let's look at the cut line. And this is heating up as Nick Purcells with a great day. He is up to 21st. Boyle's great day. He's up to 22nd. Addison Steinbeck, a subpart A, is in 23rd. And everyone inside has to be looking out. And while the chase heats up, we still have one race left. We'll see you next time at Richmond. This is the Pencil Pro Series on the ASCA League, signing out.